Well, good morning. Well, you've joined me at, I'd say, one of my favourite venues of all time, the fabulous Woosburg Reservoir, the iconic Woosburg Reservoir. As we all know, back in its day, it was the most notorious match venue, one of the most notorious match venues, and especially bream venues in the country. And I still love coming here for many reasons. It's absolutely full of fish, all species, bream, carp, roach, you name it, it's got it in. But today we're going to target the silvers on the pole. I've decided to fish on the Barnsley Bank. And it's quite interesting, this resi, as most resis are, you can see the wind's picking up, it's getting strong. So it's really important to make those key decisions on distances and how we're going to actually feed the peg. So I'm going to run through today the rigs I'm going to be using and obviously the watercraft behind where I'm actually going to be fishing, the distance out, distances out I'm going to be fishing, the rigs, the bait, the feeding, and let's hopefully catch a great net of fish at the end of it. And throughout that process, I'm going to run through all those little changes I need to make in order to keep the bites coming and also select those better stamped fish that are coming into my swim. So let's get on with the bait preparation and feed him a peg. Well, let's talk about bait preparation. Uh, I've already mixed my ground bait, but also there's other particles that I need to talk about. I'm going to be targeting the skimmers, the roach, the hybrids. There's a lot of hybrids in here. Do you know what? If I can catch some of them, that'll be absolutely brilliant. So caster is the main approach. Chopworm plays a big part within the feeding, but not necessarily actually on the hook. Maybe worm head if I'm going to catch shallow, but I'll go into that in a bit. So basically, my menu for today are the ever faithful maggots and casters. Can't go anywhere without them especially for this time of the year where you really want to push your peg you want to feed some bait you want to create some attraction hopefully catch some roach then the bigger fish move in and in turn as the duration of the day progresses the size and the selective fish will come into my peg that i really want to target and these two baits are just phenomenal uh, and it allows me to feed with confidence so my plan is today if i can get through two to three pints of casters then I'm, going, I'm on for a good day's fishing. And of course, the wind plays a big part, as you can see, it's picking up now, and casters allow you to group your bait and feed more accurately, and just that slightly bit further out where the better fish might be. Maggots are for just in case maggots is right on the day. Let's talk about ground baits. Now, I've mixed up quite a simple mix, and I'm a massive believer, although this is, this is actually, when it comes to skimmers, hybrids this is a rich fish meal ground bait now simply because it's mixed fishery it's got carp in you got carp anglers coming here feeding particle baits boilies pellets so it's definitely a fish meal ground bait for the skimmers um but i still like to add that brown crumb and the reason for that is uh roach absolutely love it on here so i'm using black swim stim and brown crumb and basically i'd say it's about 70% black swim steam to 30% brown crumb. I just, in my head, I know that that brown crumb is definitely attracting everything into my swim, just in case, which often happens on here, that the skimmers don't move onto the pole line and we end up targeting roach. And we could quite easily catch maybe 20 to 30 pound of roach during a match. So that's why I like to add it. So as you can see, this is the ground bait. And I've mixed it up quite wet. I want it quite inert. It's overcast, it's windy, it'll have undertow, I want a heavy bait, I want to create accuracy with my feeding, and also I want, to, I want it to remain on the deck within an area of where I'm feeding. So it's quite a heavy mix. And then that allows me to feed, add a little bit more water to it, um, and feed uh, heavier balls throughout the day. Not necessarily through the pot either, I might be feeding little nuggets with worm and casters in via the hand, little nuggets on a regular basis to deliver that bait down it works really well and that is the perfect mix now i've actually mixed up my feeding balls here so in this here i'm not going to feed a massive amount of bait at the start to me ground bait is a great way of kicking your peg off but it's the loose feed that is absolutely paramount that you've got to get going so my main aim is to feed casters via the catapult over the top of this ground bait, and that is how i'm going to pull fish into my peg but I always like to kick it off with exactly the same mix as I've shown you. Some casters in there and some large pieces of worm. I've chopped the worm. You see it there? You can just see that worm there. I've chopped the pieces up 
of worm to the same size as my casters and this is something I do quite a lot when it comes to natural fishing. I've added a handful of chop worm into my casters as well that I'm going to be loose feeding. So I'm constantly introducing worm into the peg. So if worm is the right bait on the day and the fish really need that bait to hold on in the swim, it allows me to manage my hook baits and change different baits because I know worms going in all the time. So what I'm going to be feeding maybe four or five balls, quite soft as well. I'm not going to tighten them up they're going to be quite loose because i want that bait to spread in an area to start off with four or five balls of that at the start and then maybe after 10 15 minutes i'm going to start loose feeding so that is the bait is as simple as that so we're talking about <coughs> maggots casters ground bait as i've already explained and some worms for either on the hook and for later chopping as well if i need to do some more and that's it simple maggots casters worms Right, let's talk about rigs. Quite simple, really. Three rigs. And on this bank, it's a lot shallower than on the Sheffield bank. I reckon I've got just over seven foot. So I've chosen, looked at the weather. Don't think it's going to be overly too windy. So I've chosen three rigs. So let's talk about the biggest rig. I'm using uh, a 0.8 PB Silver. I love these Silvers just simply because of the shoulder and it allows me to hold against them obviously on these kind of venues you get a lot of skim and you need a rig and a pattern that allows you a to deliver the float in quite quickly because we might be getting a lot of bites uh, but also hold against that service movement quite a long lash as well to compensate for the amount of wind that i'm going to be faced with but this is why these floats are so good uh, they just ride the water, cut through that water movement and create really good bait presentation. Wire stem, really important for this kind of terrain. 014 mainline, I'll talk about the elastic in a minute. Um, now this is uh, 0.8, so I've got a spread bulk of number 8 going all the way down. And what I've done, I've created like a spread bulk and then three number 9 droppers. I will change that rig as the day progresses, depending on how my peg's working. And hopefully, this is the rig I'm gonna be catching on. But what happens on this venue is a lighter rig always works better. So I've covered myself for those options. So that's my point eight, all with slip number six elastic. For this venue and most kind of like silverfish venues where you're fishing quite a positive, that elastic's perfect. And that blends with the hook length that I'm using which is, uh, like I said, it's an 014. This is uh, Aero Slick Silk Mainline. Brilliant for your rigs, especially putting shot on it, don't kink it. But then I'm using 08 fluorocarbon. Now this Aero fluorocarbon, it's only 08, but it's unbelievably strong. So even though today I might be targeting big hybrids, big bream, the odd big bream, hopefully, and I might even hook into the odd uh, angry carp, this fluorocarbon is absolutely phenomenal. Down to a size 16 red roach. They're an acolyte red roach. They're a new hook from Drennan and I absolutely love them for this kind of fishing. Perfect for caster fishing. Uh, and little bits of worm as well. So let, that's the point 0.8 rig. Then the next rig down is a point 0.6. So virtually exactly the same, exactly the same main line, exactly the same float. More of a spread bulk now. Now, I've actually got spread number nines going down. And like I said, this rig will change. The shotting pattern, the presentation will change as the day progresses. Down to an 08 fluorocarbon again, to again, exactly the same hook, a red roach 16. Just the perfect hook. It's amazing because it's kind of like a flattened wire. Although it's a finesse hook, because it's flat the wire, it's amazing how strong it is. And that blends perfectly with hooking those bigger fish, but also swinging that bigger stamp fish out. So you're going to amass a weight a lot quicker and more efficiently. And that blends again with this kind of elastic. Down to, and like I said, this that 4 by 16 that's for just slowing that drop down as well but also more importantly once the rig is in on the bottom it's less resistance you get cleaner bites and you also catch those warier fish that might wise up to a heavier rig and that's why you've got to alternate your rigs all the time now this is my shallow rig 
kind of like a shallow rig. I reckon today it's not, we're gonna be fishing two, three foot deep shallow. We're gonna be catching two thirds depth. So I've got on a four by 14 Delta. I absolutely love these floats for shallow fishing and for drop fishing. Um, so I'm using, especially on wild waters where you need to cut through that skim, these are absolutely brilliant. So this is a four by 14, exactly the same elastic, exactly the same main line, spread bulk there with number 10s as droppers. These are number 10s, they're just spread 10s. So I've got a spread bulk of 10s and 10s as droppers. And like I said, as the match progresses, as the day progresses, I'm gonna alternate this rig to get it working right. And this is set at three quarters depth. And the beauty about that is, I've actually plummeted up at seven and a half meters. So I'm gonna be feeding two lines. Hopefully if the wind allows me to do it properly, I'm gonna lose feeding casters long at 10 and a half meters and a line at seven meters as well. Because often that loose fed line, sure, will play a big part later on in the day. So that enables me to use one rig for both lines. All it's a case of is just shipping that little bit further out whilst I'm loose feeding casters long and short and finding out where the fish want to be and also what depth they want to be at. And this rig just covers everything. So that's my rigs. Three rig covers the box, covers both swims. Uh, and hopefully I'll find one of those rigs that's going to work really well today. So let's feed my peg and get fishing. Right, let's talk about feeding now. Like I said at the start, four balls, casters, worms. But what I'm going to do, and as you can see, that wind is going to cause a big problem for me today because that pack full of bait, but that is just an attractor. It's the loose feed, like I said, that's important. I've got to choose carefully the distance I fished at. So I've plummeted up at 10 meters. I don't want to fish too far out because I want to group my bait and present my float correctly as best I can in the conditions. And if the wind picks up anymore, it allows me to still hold my pole at that distance. So four of these balls straight in. And like I said, they're quite soft. So they're gonna break up really quickly. I want the peg to kick off quite quickly. I've already got some tape on my pole, on my marker. There used to be a time when we used to come in, we used to ball it, but actually cupping in works better now. And it's amazing how venues change over time. Like I said, that cupping, uh, balling used to be, work really well on here. But what I, what I find on this venue, when it comes to the silvers, is often you catch beyond your bait. And this is why I've chosen a sensible distance for me to exercise over my bait and uh, past it as well. One more ball. And then that's it. And I'd say, give it five, ten minutes, the fish will be on that, munching away on all those particles. There you go, four balls. Job done. Well, we've only been fishing, literally, three minutes. I've had a little roach on maggot. I thought, I'll just try caster. And first chuck in on the caster, not instantly, but maybe after two minutes, I've had my first bite. And it looks like it's going to be a hybrid, the way it's fighting. And I tell you what, the hybrids in here are absolutely stunning fish. Well worth catching, especially on this light tackle. It's so much fun. I mean, look at that for a fish. That is beautiful. I mean, look at that for a fish, hey? A typical was hybrid, and let me tell you, that is a small hybrid for here. Hopefully, we'll catch some big ones. Let's slip them in the net and try and catch some more. In you go, mate. Thank you. I'm using quite a heavy-duty catapult. The kind of catapult I'd actually use for my commercial fishing for feeding eight more pellets at 25 meters, because I want a, I want a really powerful 
pouch that really projects those casters out quickly and in a group and a tight group because of this wind. And if you try to use a softer catapult elastic, your bait would spread over a, a longer line or a longer trail, so to speak. So I'm not feeding aggressively at the start. Like I said, I put four balls of bait out, which are quite full of particles, casters and worms. But I want to get those casters falling through that water because when it comes especially to the hybrids, that's how you're going to draw more fish into your peg. They're going to be following that bait down. And that's why I've set a shallow rig up for two thirds depth because I believe that's the optimum depth where they intercept the bait, two thirds down. Especially coming into the October time, back end of the summer, beginning of the autumn, they just feed a little bit deeper than what the wool have been doing over recent weeks during that warm weather we've had. And I don't expect to catch a lot of fish in the first two hours, but I'm sure that I'll hook into a few more fish as the, uh, this next hour progresses. And this is really important. You've just got to keep going. Don't lose hope, be confident, keep that bait going, and not too often. I mean, look at them for roach. They are absolutely stunning fish. And I tell you what, if you're catching them on a regular basis, you soon build up a weight very quickly. Now, we had um, a silverfish festival on here around this time last year, and I won the festival. Uh, don't forget, I'm, it's something I don't do a lot of, but I love coming here doing it. Uh, and it was a two-day festival, and I won the festival with mainly roach on the caster. And I was catching that stamp roach for the both two days. And I ended up, I think I had 36 pounds of them on the first day and 28 pounds of them on the second day. And the fishing was astronomical. So if you balance your tackle out right, like what I explained this morning with the rigs and the hooks, and the fine hook length as well, it's amazing how quickly you can amass a weight of roach. And the roach are so small and stumpy that they actually weigh a lot more than what you think. Get your feeding right, get your rigs right, get your presentation right, and before you know it, you could weigh quite a, a really great, you know, a good weight. You could have a great day's fishing, have a really good weight at the end of the session. So what I'm doing is I'm holding that flow tight against that water movement a, so I know my hook bait is over the top of my bait. But it means the whole rig is working in a straight line. And as you can see, the fish in here, considering we've only just started, is phenomenal. I can't advocate how good this venue is for all, all species. Roach, skimmers, and loads of carp. And often I come in here, I just set a method feeder rod up and chuck it a distance out and sit there patiently for a few bites. But I tell you what, there is nothing better than this. Knowing you're going to feed some bait, be active, get loads of bites, and just, just have a great day's fishing. And you can see already that they're coming to that bait very, very quickly. I think this wind's helping. I think any venue where there's a wind on a blow, it gets fish moving. It gives them, gives them that safety blanket to compete and feed a lot quicker. And you've always got to have that in the back of your mind. Although you get to a venue and it's flat calm, always prepare yourself. If the wind picks up all of a sudden on these wild waters, you have to use the right rig accordingly. So at this present time, because of the species I want to target, there is no point in me laying on a load of line on the bottom. And therefore, when a fish takes your bait near the bottom, you rig straight and it registers on your bristle straight away. And you can see with the elastic that I'm using, it allows me to swing even, you know, and that's a small roach really, but a good stamp fish at the same time. If I hook a better fish, I can swing it with confidence. And I'm hooking the caster as if I'm hooking a maggot. I'm not burying the hook in. I want everything to be showing because they take the bait very positively. 
And then when I'm laying my rig out, I'm actually laying my rig in a straight line. I'm dragging the rig back so the rig is completely straight as it's falling. So that allows me to read if, an in, if I get indications on the drop. Holding it really tight against that water movement. I'm getting bites in that bottom third now. Now this is where I said I need to adjust my rig. I'm just going to adjust that shotting pattern and lower the weight further down the rig to deliver it quicker to that bottom third. Because of this wind, I just want that rig to be a bit straighter in that bottom third. And it's falling a little bit too slow as it stands. And they're inspecting it too much. I want it to fall past them quicker. So I'll just unhook this beautiful roach. And just slide. And this is a bit about using uniform shot. It allows you to manage your presentation critically. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm grouping more shot in the bottom third now. So I'm still fishing like a spread bulk with droppers, but I've tightened those droppers up and I've included one of my shot from the bulk into my dropping principle. So I've got an extra dropper now, so to speak. All tightened up, everything will work quicker now. Another thing to remember is, if the wind picks up, don't feed unless you know you can feed accurately. <clears throat> I want to try and, try and croup that bait reasonably tight. And your peg won't be damaged if all of a sudden you just go for a spell where you don't feed for a few minutes. Again, this is just start of the session. The peg won't get going for at least another two hours now now my bait's straight everything's on the deck now that's it's amazing just by tightening that shut up has made a massive difference on my presentation and i believe looking at how my rig's working and how the fish are feeding that a 0.6 is going to be better today definitely but let's just keep going with this rig just for now especially when there's not many fish in your peg at the start, try and be positive because you could actually give yourself that opportunity of hooking those better fish that are coming to your peg. Just by fishing a more positive rig. And you, um, you know, a lot of these fish are small. You just gotta keep going through emotions because if you start trying to do too much to avoid the small fish, you miss the principle of what you're trying to achieve, which is get by and put fish in the net, and they all add up. So you've got to keep busy. Especially as the day progresses, definitely better fish will move into the peg. And I'm sure, like I said earlier, I'm sure I'm going to hook into the odd carp as well, because this is perfect conditions for carp to feed. Not that I want to catch them on this, to be honest with you. I'd, uh, I'd settle for a big hybrid every single chuck. You can see this lake is just absolutely rigid with silvers of all sizes. And this is why you've got to feed quite a bit of bait and be positive. Well, we're 20 minutes in now, and it's quite interesting. Most venues take a while to get going, but it's evident to see that there's some fish feeding today. Perfect conditions and they're on the bait straight away. I've already had a lovely hybrid and the peg's just getting really good. And I've just experimented, to be honest with you. I've put double caster on and I've been rewarded with quite a nice skimmer. So I've put a bigger hook on to compensate for bigger baits, just to be a bit more selective to see what's in my peg feeding. Yeah, I'm getting a bite of chuck with a single caster, but I wanna speed the process up and uh, I say I've had a lovely skimmer on double caster and just that heavier bait maybe it's because of the obviously a target bait but also the weight of the bait um, just creating that bit, bit better bait presentation as well in these quite windy conditions and you can just tell the peg's getting stronger and stronger 
What I do need to figure out though, is of course I'm gonna carry on feeding ground bait, uh, casters I mean, but did he want some more ground bait with some worming? Really like a focal point in my peg. So I'm not gonna be, get a bit too giddy at the start. I'm just gonna carry on going through the motions, feeding casters, fishing double caster. Um, but when the time's right, maybe in a, maybe about 10 minutes, I'd say, I'm just gonna feed a small nugget of ground bait with worm just to see what happens. Because I'm convinced they'll be on it straight away, then better quality fish. But it's imperative that you still keep that bait going in. You'll be positive. So I'm feeding that amount of casters on a regular basis. And I'd say if you if you if you break this into like four rate with the amount of fish that are in the peg, maybe not even a third of that bait is getting to the bottom. And that's why you've got to be positive. And you can tell. This, this 16 double caster setups all right when there's more fish in the bigger fish in the peg feeding but there's too many silvers really too too many small fish to ignore at the moment that's two bites i've missed with double caster so what i'm going to do is i'm going to s bend the rig now rather than lay it in a straight line i'm looping the rig so it falls a lot quicker holding the rig up, holding it straight as if you would normally with bloodworm fishing or, or even pellet fishing on a commercial nowadays. So the rig's getting straight down to the bottom now. That's a really efficient way, even by using the same weight rig of delivering your hook bait a lot quicker onto the bottom. Look at that, everything's nice and sturdy on the bottom now. Giving myself that opportunity, if it does go under, of targeting the better fish in the peg and the beauty about this style of fishing especially when you've got this water movement on the bites are positive so you wait until it goes under properly I'm, as I say I'm not laying a lot of line on the bottom I'm literally laying I'm fishing two inches on the bottom but it is evident to see that as soon as I've stepped up a hook size my bites have decreased massively. My catch rate's gone. And you've got to be careful. My catch rate's gone from getting a fish a chuck or catching really well to sitting and waiting. Now, this is all right if I know the fish are there. But there we go. That's a good, that's a hybrid. Do you know what? This is great. I absolutely love it. This is what it's all about. You know, I have to just sit there and wait, but looping that rig in made a massive difference because it delivered the hook bait past all them roach that are wanting to grab the bait on the descent. And I tell you what, there's some massive hybrids in here. Let's have a look, see what it is. Beautiful fish. I tell you what, they've got so much power in them. Oh, it's a skimmer, big skimmer. You know, when that ran off, I was convinced that was a hybrid in the net. And this is what it's all about. And it's amazing, just in a short spell of time, how you can get quite a decent weight with these fish. Look at that. Beautiful. Slip them in the net. Try and catch another one. Right, I know it's early on in the session, but I really feel as if the conditions are so right for being positive. So what I'm feeding is a small nugget of wet ground bait with quite a few worms in. You can see big pieces as well. Just to kind of like what I said earlier, create that focal point in the peg, not a massive ball, because it's not about putting another big ball out. I've already done that, I've already set the trap. I just want a reason for them to home in on this ball. Like I said, I'm fishing a big up now with double caster, being more selective with the fish in my peg, plopping that little ball in. And let's see what happens now. And often what happens is
it's quite instant. Watch this. I'll go in and get a two ounce roach now. But it's amazing if the especially if the skimmers are in the peg that they home in on that bait straight away. So what I'm gonna do exactly the same, I wanna deliver that hook bait down to the bottom. So I'm gonna arc it into my peg. It's amazing what you can do with one rig. You can lay it in, you can flick it out in front of you, which works really well on here, especially when they start backing away from the bait, especially on calm days, but because the wind's perfect, they'll be on top of the feed. You can arc it, you can lay it in, you can arc it in. So I'm doing, putting the rig downstream, pulling the float up. So now my bulk is bang over my feed, bringing the float back down and holding it. And it's amazing, even the lightest rig, how short time it takes for the rig to straighten up. Now the bait's on the bottom now, lower the rig in. I just want to keep that still as possible. One thing I also am going to do is I'm going to, there we go, straight away. So they're on top of that ball instantly, following it straight down. The inch, oh, and I, have I pulled out of it? No, I haven't. I thought I pulled out of it then. And the interest, interesting thing is, you'd think worm would be better, but here it's just a caster venue. You just love casters. And I'm, I'm, I like to be simplistic with my fishing. Look at that, Peter the perch. I want to, what I'm feeding is casters, so that is what I want to keep on the hook as much as possible. Yes, occasionally I'll put a worm head on because, of course, worms are going into the peg. But like I said, the worm is the attractor. It's the casters what I feel, what I believe is what the fish are feeding on. So again. Double caster, just like that. Nice big hook, positive hook. Like I said, all the other rigs I've set up are uh, 08 fluorocarbon. This is 010 fluorocarbon. Obviously a bigger hook, more positive setup, more selective for the better fish in the peg. I'm not going to lose feed casters just yet because I want to see if that ground bait and that concentration of feed makes a difference. Oh, a small roach. So you've got to weigh these options up. Do you sit there with double caster? And I tell you what, at the moment, no, I don't think it's right. I think single cast is the right approach. But in a bit, I'll be swapping back to this rig and this setup when I know there's more skimmers in the peg. And that is just time in motion. You can't expect to happen in minutes. I reckon the last two hours of the session is when there's better fish in the peg. And unfortunately, that's most of the time when there's going to be carp in the peg as well. Therefore, not going to catch as many roach, so I may as well fish big baits for more selective fish. But at the moment, like I said, you've got to be really careful on what your setup needs to be and what you need to target. Well, I'd say we are an hour and a half into the session now, an hour and 40 minutes, and it's gone very, very strange. Just on the verge, when I'm thinking of everything clicking into place the winds really picked up but the problem with the wind is there's, if there's some undertow you can create really good bait presentation but there's no undertow whatsoever and the water movement is moving with the wind and that is creating very poor bait presentation i've ended up having to put a bigger rig on but actually that was worse so I'm still maintaining, uh, concentrating on a 0.8 rig and really having to hold hard against this water movement. But everything's just kind of like collapsed. And it's the, the, the interesting thing about this is you think there's nothing there. But let me tell you, as soon as that wind dies, 
and everything calms back down again, if we're lucky enough for that to happen, the, pipe, the bikes come back, the stamp of the fish increases and everything. So you always got to think, there is ways of trying to create that better pre bait presentation to get keep the bites coming, increase the size of the stamp of the fish that you're catching. There's no way I can say that there's nothing there. They're there. But our presentation is hindering our hook bait. So I'm having to work really hard to hold against that water movement. And even like before when I was catching loads of small roach, the bites have just completely stopped. And I've tried everything from ligging on the bottom, bigger baits, to back to square one really, where with the rig that I started with, which I advocated at the start of the session, which I felt was gonna be the, the most productive rig, which was the point eight. And uh, you've just got to keep going through emotions. You've got to keep feeding. I have fed a small nugget of ground bait. And let me tell you, I caught a perch over it straight away. And then after that, it created a bit of a bad response in my peg. So I'm just relying at this moment in time on loose feed to hopefully draw some more fish in. But I'm even calming the loose feed down a bit because the bites have really, really tailored off. And until that presentation increases, there's no point in me plowing loads of casters in until I can read A, where the fish are as regards to the depth and the position in my swim, as regards to a slightly downstream, downwind. Uh, until I figure a few things out like that, I'm not going to up my feed because I'm just not getting enough buys to give me that confidence to push my peg. Uh, and I've just got to wait. Of course, I'm going to be feeding some bait, but not as a, aggressive as, a, as on a regular basis as what I was at the start of the session. Hey up, hey up. What's this? So of course, I'm still ligging on the bottom a little bit, single caster fishing for everything that swims. Double caster work for a very short space of time. But of course, single caster is just allowing me to target everything. And it allows me to also read what's in the peg present. Now I'd imagine this is a skimmer. Um, and it's evident to see that they are coming to the casters that I'm feeding. And in a way, sometimes it's a good it's a good thing that I'm not getting loads of bites because it allows me to focus more on the deck for beautiful fish such as these. Look, we're not fishing for 60, 70 pounds of silvers. If I get 15, 20 pounds today, it's not my hook out. He's a lively one, aren't you, mate? If I get 15 or 20 pounds today. Of them, look at them. I'll be a very happy person. What a beautiful fish. Let's get him back. You can always tell on these mixed fisheries when you've got an arrival of carp. And like what I said at the start, as the day progresses, I'm sure the odd carp <coughs> is going to come in. The problem that I've got is I wish I could stay, I'm still getting loads of bites and having a great day, but the peg has gone from loads of bites to absolutely nothing. And in the last 20 minutes, I've hooked a carp and got one out, about seven or eight pound. I think I've had one more bite and had a roach, and then I've hooked another carp. Now, I'm only fishing 08 fluorocarbon to <laughs> an 18. A 16, sorry, red roach. And this is a good fish. And I'm just hoping, if I can clear my peg of carp, I'll get an arrival of roach and skimmers again. But at the moment, all that seems to be in my peg is carp. And this is a problem with this bank and when you're pleasure fishing as well. When you're match fishing, they're a little bit less reluctant to come onto your pole line until later on. 
but pleasure fishing happy as larry coming straight over the bait and uh yeah not the fish i'm after really however Balanced tackle is really important, and with this elastic, I'm, my elastic's nearly locked up now. It's amazing how much power, how much, sorry, how strong, even the, you know, the, the lowest of diameter hook lengths, like what I'm using, has. You know, I'm playing it like I'm playing a car with proper match tackle you know proper carp tackle 014 016 up lengths are even bigger and these hooks are ridiculous how strong they are but yet really really light and i tell you what i'm glad i put some fresh elastic in last night because this it's a good fish i don't think it'll fit in my landing net to be honest with you no it won't that's that's a big fish <laughs> no if I can just see its head first. Yeah, that's a good fish. And the beauty about the fish in here is... Oh! <laughs> He's off. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, this is the life. Now the interesting thing is, this is a nice fish. Since I've hooked this car, hooked that car up and lost it next to there. If I'd have had a bigger landing there, I think I'd have got it. The bites are literally so hard to come by at the moment. What's this? So oh, skimmer. But I'm just hoping, just maybe that resting period has given them fish a chance to settle over my bait now. And it won't take long to get a weight of fish if they're like these and how many times do we experience it where we're going through the motions look at that beautiful putting the odd fish in the net the clock's ticking away and you're thinking do you know what it's not going to happen and then all of a sudden it does coinciding with often the time of the day as well what's really really caused a problem today is that wind the tow hasn't started at all there's no undertow which is really surprising i'd have thought by now it'd start towing back up but it hasn't so my presentation i'm trying to make it as good as i possibly can but it is such hard work it really is in this wind regardless of the rig and as bizarre as it sounds i've put another rig on a gram rig thinking it was going to be better and actually it's worse the 4B18 rig is by far the best weight today regarding how the fellow presents in these, I wouldn't say they're adverse conditions, they're difficult conditions. It's difficult to create and maintain good bait presentation. And what's happening is I'm constantly hitting the flow. Got my pole tip in the water now, keeping it as low as I possibly can to minimise any resistance against that flow, yet at the same time trying to hold it back because if I if I let it go, the float's just drifting down the swim, creating very poor bait presentation, and I'm wanting to create a straight line. Like I said earlier, them fish are there, but they're just not feeding in numbers like what I thought they would. Maybe them carp have ruined my peg a bit. I'm still convinced, even if it's the last hour, that I'll get an arrival of fish. I've actually tried that short line where I've loose fed some casters. I haven't fed on a regular basis. And I had a first drop in, I had a few fish, a few small roach, but then it's petered out again. But it's evident to see that those carp have really slowed the peg and it's amazing sometimes that all of a sudden things start happening and yeah that's only a little richard the roach only a small fish 
I'm just hoping that the carper vacated the premises and the silvers are starting to feed a bit better now even if the presentation isn't very good I should still be getting bites so I've just got to keep going through the motions <clears throat> I'm right over the top of my, my ground bait whatever is there but I've had to stop feeding it because I've tried it twice where I've topped up with ground bait a bit of worm in the ground bait casters and I've caught a carp over the top of it that, that focal point has homed those carp in straight over the top of my bait um, and had an adverse effect on my peg really resulted in fewer bites after I've hooked that carp so I've had to stop thinking about introducing ground bait into my peg and just purely rely upon time and motion loose feeding casters laying my rig out just going through the motions all the time and hoping that a succession of bites are going to arrive um, often sometimes it's good it's good to maybe leave your peg for a bit see if that makes a difference you know so I'm going to give it a few more moments out here maybe about another 10-15 minutes and if it doesn't work I'm going to come back short again catch a few small roach and then drop back out long but I'm still convinced like I said later on I'm going to get a run of fish and uh, this is the bank that gets the most sun so as a result this is the bank where the carp like, like to patrol near to these boards that's a small roach and uh, I think you've just got to keep focused on what you're doing there's no point in me thinking right I'll try and add some worm or anything the fish just aren't there in numbers like what I expected them to be but all you need is 20 minutes on a few skimmers when they turn up and it's usually the later on the day when they turn up if you can imagine when they feel more confident to settle over your bait quick run of skimmers in a short period of time and you can amass a weight very very quickly and the skimmers in here they're really they're protein packed skimmers they don't look big but they weigh very heavy so it's amazing how quickly you can actually get a, a weight of skimmers so you just got to keep going through the motions and hopefully everything will come to uh, fruition a few big bream later on and I'll be a very happy person but at the moment you can just tell everything is hard work and I suppose in a way that is the challenging aspect of what we're trying to achieve here these wire waters you come with a high expectations like what I did this morning of getting a fisher chuck all day and all of a sudden yeah, it's not going to plan. What do I need to do? Uh, and that's what makes it so interesting. It really gets your thinking cap on on what you can do to induce bites, get bites, catch fish. And literally from getting a fish every single chuck in this morning to very, very few bites now in my peg. Very few bites. I'm just going to have a go past my feed because the majority of my bait is landing. You know, it's not what you want. Half a meter short where I'm fishing now, and occasionally I'm just going past my feed just to see if there's a head of fish beyond my feed. And this happens an awful lot of Woosburgh. You feed your ground bait at a specific distance and there's more fish beyond it. So let's just have a go, because that, that was a fish, but not worth even considering, really. So let's just have a little flick here. Half a metre past my feed, where some of my bait is going as well. Right, so I've had a go past my feed. 
And this is my confidence line, to be honest with you. The amount of fish I catch doing this on this venue, I'd say 80% of my silverfish when I do it is on this line, half a metre past where my ground bait's gone. Not had a bite. Rig settled, everything's straightened up. It should be going under now. It's not happened. And that is not a good sign. So it looks like I've just got to concentrate on the main line because you know when there's roach there in abundance, in numbers, because that rig should be going on the drop, on the descent, as the rig's straightening up, should be getting bites. Nothing at all. We're coming to what I would class as the crucial time in the day where everything should be happening. And to be honest with you, the fishing has got a bit better because now I'm getting a succession of bites. Only small roach, but the peg seems a, a, a bit stronger. There's a bit more continuity to it. <clears throat> I'm feeding, I'm putting my rig in, I'm getting bites and I'm putting fish in the net. The interesting thing is, they're quite a small stamp fish. Like that. Nice little lively roach. But I'm getting bites on a regular basis. That's a, helping me keep in the rhythm, putting bait in, keeping active. But what is definitely apparent is there's no better fish feeding at this moment in time. I'm sure I'll get an arrival soon. But everything's just a bit strange. And like what I said, I think this presentation's made a massive, given just a big hindrance on the day in general. But at least I'm getting bites now. And in this crucial time, this last hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes, this is where you've got to make the most of these little feeding windows. And this may be reflecting upon, because of the conditions, and if this was a silverfish match, um, everyone would more or less be catching the same stamp fish in this part of the lake where the wind is a hindrance. So you've just got to get your head down and put fish in the net. And... Uh, yeah, it's not solid. Definitely not what I expected. I expected to, A, to hook quite a few more hybrids. And I've only had one. Definitely some more skimmers. And I've had the odd one, but not as many as what I thought. And without doubt, in between that, loads and loads of roach, good stamp roach as well, but it's just not happened. And I'm utterly convinced it's nothing but the presentation and this downward wind with no undertow. And let me tell you, if this peg was undertowing, I'd be using a lighter rig and I'm convinced I'll be catching more and bigger stamp fish. It's just had a real effect on the overall fishing in general. But you've got to, just got to keep going. Keep putting fish in the net and fish for what's feeding. And at this moment in time, at least I'm getting bites in comparison to... Middle of the day was terrible, to be honest with you. Really bad. Really struggled. So, like I said earlier, even if I get a last 20 minute run of skimmers, I'll be happy with that. Because we are fishing too, match times. It's all about this information being relative when you're in a match when you feed your peg what do you do what changes you make and uh, as this light drops i'm still convinced i'm definitely going to get a rival of skimmers on this line just got to keep going through the motions what is interesting is the carp have come into my peg, like I said, when I fed a little bit of ground bait. I'm just, am I going to say it? Yeah, I will say it. They, they don't, I don't seem to be getting any problems at the moment with them. 
So uh, hopefully I might not hook another carp for the rest of the day, which would be absolutely awesome. One thing I am going to do, and I'm, I'm glad it's happened, I've just noticed my cast, my hook's not as sharp as what it should be. So I am going to change my hook, and that makes a massive, ma massive difference. It's not, a, as I'm putting that point in to the caster, it's clean, but it's not as clean as it was regarding sliding the hook in. And especially when you're roach fishing and shell fishing, as regards to caster fishing, if you ever feel that your hook is not right, change it immediately. In a match, I would have definitely changed this straight away. But it really does affect how the caster sits on your hook and how it presents. So let's come back, put a fresh hook on. And this is the importance of our, of course, being prepared. And although I did have intentions of using a bigger hook today, I did prep up some single caster light hooks, just in case it was going to be harder. And this is definitely the case today. Nice fine wire hook, nice and sharp, but strong at the same time. Again, our eight fluorocarbon. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't think it really matters. I think you could get away with 09, maybe 010. But when you're confident with a line like what I am, you have faith in it. Just moved that last dropper up just a little bit. I am fishing a six inch up length, but just moved it up so I've got a little bit more of an arc in that last seven inches now. Everything's just very, very negative today. It's not, I should be, this venue is absolutely rammed with silvers, but it's just not right. However, since I've been talking to you, the wind's beginning to die down as well, which is a massive plus. Even just that little bit of wind dropping has made, just as I'm talking to you now, holding that rig still, perfect. You can hold it with so much stability now. And even something as slight as that can make a big difference on a stamp of the fish that you catch. Roach are very cute, as with all species. Better you present that bait, the bigger the stamp you're going to catch. And also, I've fed, what? <clears throat> Two pints of casters. It's coming to that time now where I'm thinking, you know what? I need to start being a bit more positive now. Not to do with my feeding, but actually what is on my hook. So, I've got to start fishing double caster soon just to see what's actually present in the swim. Make the most of that killing time. Wind's picking up now, about right. But these are the elements you're always fa faced with on these open waters. Seldom at the times you come to these places, sit there and it's flat calm. So uh, you just expect it and be prepared for it. Oh, piece of the perch. All small fish today. Let's try a double caster. See what happens. We've got to give it a go. Got to give it a go. I'd like to think this is going to go under and I'm going to get a three pound bream. I'm not asking for a lot. You know, just a big slab. I 
or a big hybrid. I'd take a big hybrid. I'd also take a nice hot coffee delivered to me by Kylie Minogue. Just to warm me up. So we're on double caster now. The beauty about it when you fish big baits like this at the time of the day where you think it might work is that exciting point if it does go under you're hoping that when you strike into that float the float stays still stays level with the water line nods a couple of times big bream on well i tell you what that has been so interesting very frustrating at the same time look it's overcast it's windy the conditions are absolutely perfect yet as the days progress the fishing has got harder and harder and it's been evident to see as well that the stamp of fish have massively decreased i've ended up with quite a nice net of fish to be honest with you it'll be interesting to see what i've actually got but what has been frustrating was i was convinced even that last 10 15 minutes i was going to get a run of fish but it's just not happened at all i've literally struggled for a bite for the last hour and not forgetting i'm sat here pleasure fishing but i suppose in a way this is why we keep coming back to figure these little things out and hopefully put a few more fish in the net so all in all i hope from the hints and tips i've given you my feeding patterns that next time you go out on the bank side you'll do a whole lot better than what i've done today <laughs> well i mean to be honest with you it's been really hard fishing hey up mate calm down but look at the results a few skimmers nice roach i've had some really bad spells throughout the day but i've had carp i've had a lovely carp i've actually lost one right next to the net because i couldn't get it in my landing net but look at that for a net of silvers well over double figures maybe 15 16 pound of silvers and that beautiful carp great days fishing really enjoyed it but learned a lot but frustrating at the same time so i hope you've heard learned loads of hints and tips on hopefully how to catch some skimmers and all species and balance your tackle out as well so until next time tight lines. <laughs>